dear children. It's so nice to be back again. I hope you've been having a wonderful holiday. Today, it promises to be a very beautiful time with the Lord. Are you ready? Let's go as we pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, everlasting King of glory, we thank you for all you have been for us. We thank you for being there all through the year. And we thank you for yet another year. We commit our service today into your hands. Give us a hear to hear and give us a heart to receive you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord, children. It's another time for praise and worship this morning. The Bible says, in all things, give God thanks. So this morning, let's come together once again and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sunday Kingdom Treasures, it's time for testimony. We bless the name of the Lord to be alive to see this beautiful Sunday. Let's listen to some of our testifiers. My name is Oluwa Shomuro Kushimu. I thank God for keeping me and my family. I thank God that I did not have any accidents. I thank God that I was not admitted to the, to the hospital. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. My name is Prince Rigoche. I'm thanking God for protecting me and my family. I'm thanking God for helping me pass my exams. I'm thanking God that we are not in the hospital. I'm thanking God for seeing us through the year 2020. Praise the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord for the testimonies. Let's say a word of prayer. In Jesus' name, Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you for yet another time to testify to your faithfulness. We pray that this testimony shall be permanent in Jesus' name. And Lord, we also thank you because we are going to give more testimonies, oh God, even next week Sunday, to your glory and to your praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Children, we are expecting your testimonies. If you have any testimony about the goodness of God in your life, and your family, please send it to the numbers displayed on your screen. Thank you. 
wonderful children of God. It's time for our memory verse. Our memory verse for today is taken from the book of Psalms 118 verse 1. Psalms 118 verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His love endures forever. If I were a butterfly, I thank you, Lord, for giving me wings. If I were a robin in the tree, I thank you, Lord, that I can sing. If I were a fish in the sea, I wiggle my tail and I giggle with glee. But I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. Because you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. But I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. Can someone say after me, thank you, Jesus for making me, me. Yes, now children, who can guess what our topic for today is? What do you think we're going to be talking about today? If you say thanking God, you are correct. Last week, we learned about giving thanks to God, no matter the situation. Today, I'm also going to be talking to us about thanking God and thanking others. How many of you head straight to the bathroom to brush your teeth immediately after a big meal? How many of you brush your teeth in the mornings or right before you go to bed? How many of you have to be reminded all the time by mom and dad to go in and brush your teeth? If we are wise and want to stay healthy, we will all develop a good toothbrushing habit. It should be automatic. This means that you should not wait to be reminded. When you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth. Before you go to bed at night, you brush your teeth. It's good hygiene and it doesn't take a lot of thought. Like brushing your teeth, being thankful should be intentional. We need to say thank you for little things and for big things. God wants us to count our blessings and to express our thanks to him and to others. God deserves our thankfulness and we should tell him how thankful we are all the time. Let's read the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 12 to 19. Luke 17, 12 to 19. As he was going into a village, 10 men with leprosy came toward him. They stood at a distance and shouted, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Jesus looked at them and said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. On their way, they were healed. When one of them discovered that he was healed, he came back shouting praises to God. He bowed down at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. The man was from the country of Samaria. Jesus asked, Weren't ten men healed? Where are the other nine? Why was this foreigner the only one who came back to thank God? Then Jesus told the man, you may get up and go. Your faith has made you well. Ten lepers came to Jesus with the hope of healing. Jesus gave the ten lepers something that no one else could. He gave them back their health and he also gave them back their lives. Lepers were forced to live outside the city because leprosy is a very, very horrible disease and it is contagious. This means that it could easily be passed on from one infected person to another person. Okay, So they were never allowed to see their families or friends again because they had to live outside of the city. If someone came too close, they literally were required to chase the people away. Now, when Jesus healed these lepers, he restored their health and their lives. But only one of them came back to say thank you. The others were too excited to show themselves to the priests, to be declared clean and to show themselves to their loved ones. This one leper came back to say thank you. 
Now, this one leopard that came back to say thank you shows us how important it is to stop whatever we are doing and show real gratitude to God and to the people who bless us every day. You see, Jesus made it a point to call out the other nine lepers to show the importance of being thankful. The one leper who came back to give thanks was perfectly made whole. God is faithful to provide our needs as well as extra blessings when we give him thanks. God deserves to hear our thanksgiving often. How do we thank God? We thank God through praise and through prayers. Regularly expressing our thanks to God is one of our best weapons against all of life's battles. Being thankful is an important part of following Jesus. It lifts us up when we are down and it helps us to be mindful of the blessing God has given to us. We say thank you for a lot of things. We thank people for helping us up when we fall down. We thank people for giving us things when we need them. It's important to say thank you even in these small instances to let people know that we appreciate their little kindnesses. But it's equally important that we thank the people who bless us in big ways also. Now children, when was the last time you thanked God for life, for flowers, for water, or for Jesus? When was the last time you sat down and counted all your blessings, both big and small? How about your parents? When did you last thank them for all they've given to you? Mommies and daddies work hard to provide homes, clothes, food, and toys for you. Even the things we may not necessarily love, like going to see the dentist or going to the hospital when we are sick and going to school. They are blessings from our parents to us. Have you ever taken the time to thank them for making sure you get an education and for staying healthy? God wants us to have grateful hearts. He wants us to show our thanks to him and everyone who blesses us. When we are thankful, we let other people know that we appreciate them. We also remind ourselves over and over how blessed we truly are. A grateful heart can be a sad heart for long because a grateful heart is always aware of just how much our God and our loved ones care for us. Saying thank you shouldn't be a mindless habit. God wants us to be mindful of our blessings. He wants us to take the time to thank him and to thank others for all they do for us. Don't just say the words thank you because you have to say thank you, okay? Say the words thank you because you actually mean it. Be intentional when you say the words thank you to God and to others. Let's say this prayer together. All eyes closed, please. Dear God, thank you for all that you have given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, there is a particular set of people that I want to address. Those who are yet to give their lives to Christ. Jesus loves you. No matter the gravity of your sin, he's ready to forgive you. Just like the ten lepers went to him to be cleansed, you too can go to him. He's waiting to receive you with outstretched arms. His word says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So if you want to accept Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior, close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for my life. I accept you into my life as my Lord and personal Savior. I ask that you forgive me all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Wonderful! That was a lovely message by Auntie Princess. I hope you all have learned every reason why you should always give thanks. 
So let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you for today's service. And we ask, O oh Lord, that your spirit to always be thankful at all times, whether it is good or whether it is bad. Father, we need your help to always awaken us to the reason why we should always give thanks. Help us, O oh Lord, even as we commit the rest of the week into your hands. Have your way, Lord, and be glorified in everything we shall do. In Jesus' name we pray. Our confession for today is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 1 and 2. And it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'll tell the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him my trust. Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2.